All right, here we are with another uh, micro soldering iron. Uh, and again, I guess I'm trying to do another video before the hurricane. It's supposed to hit to, uh, hit tomorrow. So uh, this is a going to butcher this. Wrong one. <laughs> Almost sounds like wrong one. Uh, wrong guan is what it sounds like. Uh, smart and convenient electric soldering iron. Uh, OLED display, HD digital display. Uh, 80 to 420 Celsius, a little higher than the uh, TS101. Uh, adjustable temperature. Uh, induction, hibernation, and rapid return to temperature. Let's see, specifications, operating voltage is 9 to 20 volts, power is 65 watts, temperature range 80 to 420 Celsius, uh, input is type uh, USB type C, uh, it, go, it accepts PD and QC uh, control uh, power. Screen is an OLED model RGS65 uh, by Shenzhen, uh, uh, China. Let's just say China. All right. So, and uh, I haven't plugged this in. So, if it doesn't even work, you're gonna find out right along with me. Uh, instructions nobody needs. Uh, and again, <laughs> operating voltage range is 5 to 24 volts. So I'm kind of wondering. Let's see. Let's see. The back of the box says 20 volts. And the instructions or destructions say. 24 volts, 96 watts. So it leaves you to kind of wonder exactly what and what. We will look on the hand unit to see if it actually says anything. Because that's kind of the same as the TS-101 was. It, uh, the, the unit, the, the, the box and all that had a different voltage range. I guess because uh, it supported PD 3.1 and this says nothing now this only supports USB-C it does not support barrel jacks soldering tip that unscrews and I've got another one that came in and I'm going to go over an interesting fact with it when uh, I do the the review on it because it is basically a re-engineered vape yes a re-engineered vape that is what it is And this is everything that comes with the uh, kit. Uh, I haven't stuck anything in the box. This is the uh, little soldering holder, which is actually, I think, the best one that I've come across so far. It's all aluminum. And the little stand works like that now this one is in my opinion pretty cool get this open which yes I have opened it everything okay so with this one you have these uh, 
little flexi rods, which is kind of kind of neat, I believe. I'm not going to stick them all in there, but you have the alligator clips, which have um, a a rubberized coating, probably just like a condom style thing on there. I'm not 100% sure exactly, uh, but there's that's just in there. So you've got four of those, four locations that you can screw those into. Let's just put another one. Oops, let's do the right end. And so this was kind of the idea that I had in mind with the. Uh, oops, you got nuts on there to tighten it up to give to get a little more oomph holding it in place, and these seem to be pretty stiff. Uh, I don't know how they'll move around holding a board. Do I have... I actually have this huge monstrosity here. We're going to just see what it does with it. You've probably seen this before. <laughs> You can see now I, I'd have to tighten the screws up and everything but let's see that and these are actually against one another so let me see if I can try to give this a little support here now Okay, so with them semi-tight, it does seem to hold in place, and it's really surprising. I mean, I'm really surprised at, at how much stability you've got there. I think I could solder with that, especially with four of these babies on there. Uh, the, only, the only issue I would see would be the base being so small. Uh, it doesn't have it it may tend to be top heavy now of course i had that huge massive board on there i say that it's the size of a rear view mirror um but i'm i'm really liking this base uh, as a matter of fact i mean i'm i'm liking it even more than the what was it the the two ma uh, two magna magnetization circuit board holding something or another it's going to be a frankenstein project anyway i'm going to make that thing work and so anyway you get the idea uh, of how these are uh and and by the time i get into actually putting all these soldering irons against one another to check them out to see how well they do uh, i'll i'll show these I, I will i'll put these in there uh and uh, i'm thinking this is going to be a pretty, pretty good, pretty good setup. But what I'm thinking is, uh, being is this, I'm really liking this so much. Uh, I mean, I could take and put some sticky tape on that and put it on a big piece of aluminum, which I have some sheet uh, aluminum. It's, half inch by six inches by six inches which would be pretty good weight which i, I don't know I, probably, I may not do that i may just put uh a piece of uh plate steel uh, which i i have i have some pretty good sized pieces of steel out there about a half inch thick that i could do the same thing with and and actually i could just drill a hole straight through this and screw it down to it without even worrying about uh, sticky tape, which I, that alien sticky tape that I have that I got from Timu, that's some good stuff. I use it for everything. And this, by the way, came from Timu as well. So I'm going to set this off to the side. I'll do, I, I'll do a head-to-head uh, -head on the soldering irons 
and then I'll take and do a uh, um, a soldering board um, clamp because I've, I've done two of them so far with that one and uh, so I think I may show what that is by itself then upgraded and I've already shown the other one uh, with the magnifying glass and everything on it and I'll show it with upgrades and put them against one another with upgrades and and I think they're both usable I actually have three because I've also got the uh, uh, the it's plastic I put steel shot in the base of it I don't remember what the name of it was called but uh, you may remember that video um, so it'd be three of them against one another and I like that one as well so I think it would be a, a good setup too so it comes with a solder uh, absolutely no specs or ideas what this is my first thoughts would be probably leadless m meltless <laughs> solder <laughs> uh, anyway it does come with solder and it comes with a knife tip and let's see this right here is a little silicone sock you put up on there to uh, give you a little bit of grippy which eh, I, I don't know I don't, I don't think it really needs it but hey it's no big deal oh look at here never mind I, I lied to you I sure did uh, it is USB-C but it has a barrel jack uh, adapter so it can be used with the uh, 19 volt power supplies look over there RGS 65 no tip so it does know whether it's got a tip or not okay so exit volume information so Step. Come on. Temp step. Stand by. Sleep. Work volume. Temp unit. Language. Rotation for left and right. Uh, temp calibration. Inversion information. So let's say version information. So um, let's let's just see what happens with this 25 watt. Let's see if we get anything spiffy out of it. Probably shouldn't do this with it plugged in because it knows I just put a tip in it. And it's asking me Oh, so it is heating up with a 25 watt supply. Yeah, not getting much out of it though. So 132 Celsius. And <clears throat> let's see. Bump it up to 300 and see what <clears throat> it does or doesn't do. I'm kind of surprised that this 25 watt uh, power supply is actually doing anything now uh, because this is heating up really slow. And I'd be willing to bet that if I plugged that uh, 19 volt power supply in here that uh it would be heating up a lot quicker i'm almost ready to fall asleep waiting on this thing to heat up all right let's try it with uh with the laptop power supply
All right, so we've got the same Lenovo laptop power supply that uh, we was using with the TS101. Uh, again, it is 19 volts at, and don't even think I'm reading this, I'm just actually remembering, uh, 3.42 amps, center uh, pin positive, and I want to say it was 64.98 watts right at might as well say 65 watts now again we are far enough so let me see let's jump it on up there to 310 oh look at there it's already shot right up there to 320 so yeah with this power supply it's it's extremely fast um so you you can kind of get an idea of what you're going to end up with um with and and it, this seems to be exactly about the same as the ts 101 as far as speed i mean maybe even faster uh but then again i think it it only took uh, 0.6 seconds to heat up and so this is probably anyway that's all super fast it, it, it's not a not a big deal when it's heating up that fast so i can't imagine with a uh, full 90 watt powered uh, power delivery uh, power supply we will try it but uh, to be honest with you i don't i don't see needing anything beyond this 19 volt 65 watts uh, you know, that right there is, is more than adequate in my opinion. Okay, so, yeah, awesome for COPD. I need to invest in a fume fan. Uh, 310 Celsius, let's see, instant, yeah, yeah, right off the bat, that just heats straight up. It's a long press whenever you're on the one that you want to check out, so let's go back, uh, volume info, that basically gives you what your temperature is and your voltage. You can set your temp step, step increments by 10, which is good as far as I'm concerned. Standby temp is 200, which I think I'm going to change the TS-101 to that as well. Uh, sleep time by default is set to 180 seconds, which is the same for the TS-101. Uh, work volume. Uh, Okay, I think that's where you're going to set your voltage. So, hold on, let's look at that again. So, so you have 20, 15, 12, and 9. So, we'll need to look in the, uh, believe it or not, the manual to uh, Celsius, which I'm good with that, um, to see if there's a special setting that needs to be done as far as uh, dealing with uh, the higher 24 volt 90 watt PD uh, power um, I think I may have just triggered it into yeah I did so let's get it back on hold this standby sleep timer temp unit and then, of course, rotate for left or right-handed. Uh, okay, that's PO heat. I'm going to have to find out what that is. Temp calibration, of course, what it is. Inversion information, 2.2.0. Hold it down and it goes into sleep. 
So that's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if the TS-101 does that. You, I, I know I was just waiting on it to go into sleep mode. Uh, but I like, see, if you double press both of them and hold them for a, a long press, you get your setup menu. Uh, a couple seconds and it disappears. If you single press either side, you start adjusting your temperature up and down, which I haven't found presets yet, and I didn't see anything in the settings for presets, so probably not. Uh, long press the top button, and it goes into sleep. You see it dropping down. Let's see, so I think if you long press it once, it goes into sleep, starts cooling down to 200. And then tap it again, it goes straight on into sleep, and it's this is going to power completely off. I think that's turning the that'll turn the element off. So hit the bottom button, and it's on. So what about a long press there? Nothing. So let's go into sleep. Use DC power adapter. There is a USB-C to DC adapter comes with the device use it to connect a DC power adapter support DC 9 to 24 volts device may damage if you're needing 25 volts um, for USB adapter that is 5 volts heating up will be very slow uh, don't recommend to use for welding work uh, so I don't think this one has presets and it doesn't automatically wake up uh, with movement. You have to actually hit the button to enable it. Um, but I think this this one is very comparable with the TS-101. It's got uh, uh, it's got better st uh, accessories that come with it. Um, I'm liking it. I'm liking it just as well as the TS-101. I hope it performs as good as uh, the TS-101. Uh, 